Jeremiah chapter 25 The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, which was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, which Jeremiah the prophet spoke to all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, From the thirteenth year of Josiah the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even to this day, this is the twenty-third year in which the word of the Lord has come to me, and I have spoken to you, rising early and speaking, but you have not listened. And the Lord has sent to you all his servants the prophets, rising early and sending them, but you have not listened, nor inclined your ear to hear. They said, Repent now every one of his evil way and his evil doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord has given to you and your fathers for ever and ever. Do not go after other gods to serve them and worship them, and do not provoke me to anger with the works of your hands, and I will not harm you. Yet you have not listened to me, says the Lord, that you might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, because you have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, says the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and I will bring them against this land, against its inhabitants, and against these nations all around, and will utterly destroy them, and make them an astonishment, a hissing, and perpetual desolations. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth, and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones, and the light of the lamp. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. Then it will come to pass, when seventy years are completed, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, the land of the Chaldeans, for their iniquity, says the Lord, and I will make it a perpetual desolation. So I will bring on that land all my words which I have pronounced against it, all that is written in this book, which Jeremiah has prophesied concerning all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall be served by them also, and I will repay them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. For thus says the Lord God of Israel to me, Take this wine cup of fury from my hand, and cause all the nations to whom I send you to drink it and they will drink and stagger and go mad because of the sword that I will send among them. Then I took the cup of the Lord's hand and made all the nations drink to whom the Lord had sent me, Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, its kings and its princes, to make them a desolation, an astonishment, a hissing and a curse as it is this day. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, his servants, his princes, and all his people, all the mixed multitude, all the kings of the land of Uz, all the kings of the land of the Philistines, namely Ashkelon, Gaza, Ekron, and the remnant of Ashdod, Edom, Moab, and the people of Ammon, all the kings of Tyre, all the kings of Sidon, and the kings of the coastlands which are across the sea, Dedan, Tema, Buzz, and all who are in the farthest corners, all the kings of Arabia, and all the kings of the mixed multitude who dwell in the desert, all the kings of Zimri, all the kings of Elam, and all the kings of the Medes, all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world which are on the face of the earth. Also the king of Shishak shall drink after them, Therefore you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink, be drunk, and vomit. Fall and rise no more because of the sword which I will send among you. And it shall be, if they refuse to take the cup from your hand to drink, then you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, You shall certainly drink. For behold, I begin to bring calamity on the city which is called by my name, and should you be utterly unpunished? You shall not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword on all the inhabitants of the earth, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore prophesy against them all these words, and say to them, The Lord will roar from on high, and utter his voice 
from his holy habitation. He will roar mightily against his fold. He will give a shout as those who tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. A noise will come to the ends of the earth, for the Lord has a controversy with the nations. He will plead his case with all flesh. He will give those who are wicked to the sword, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, disaster shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the farthest parts of the earth. And at that day the slain of the Lord shall be from one end of the earth even to the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, or gathered, or buried. They shall become refuse on the ground. Wail, shepherds, and cry. Roll about in the ashes, you leaders of the flock. For the days of your slaughter and your dispensations are fulfilled. You shall fall like a precious vessel. And the shepherds will have no way to flee, nor the leaders of the flock to escape. A voice of the cry of the shepherds and a wailing of the leaders to the flock will be heard. For the Lord has plundered their pasture, and the peaceful dwellings are cut down because of the fierce anger of the Lord. He has left his lair like the lion, for their land is desolate because of the fierceness of the oppressor, and because of his fierce anger. Jeremiah chapter 26 In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord, saying, Thus says the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house, and speak to all the cities of Judah which come to worship in the Lord's house, all the words that I command you to speak to them. Do not diminish a word. Perhaps everyone will listen and turn from his evil way, that I may relent concerning the calamity which I purpose to bring on them because of the evil of their doings. And you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, if you will not listen to me, to walk in my law which I have said before you, to heed the words of my servants the prophets whom I sent to you, both rising up early and sending them, but you have not heeded, then I will make this house like Shiloh, and I will make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. So the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. Now it happened, when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, that the priests and the prophets and all the people seized him, saying, You will surely die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without an inhabitant? And all the people were gathered against Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the princes of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of the Lord, and sat down in the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house. And the priests and the prophets spoke to the princes, and all the people, saying, This man deserves to die, for he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the princes and all the people, saying, the Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and against this city with all the words that you have heard. Now, therefore, amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God. Then the Lord will relent concerning the doom that he has pronounced against you. As for me, here I am in your hand. Do with me as seems good and proper to you. But know for certain that if you put me to death, you will surely bring innocent blood on yourselves, on this city, and on its inhabitants. For truly the Lord has sent me to you to speak all these words in your hearing. So the princes and all the people said to the priests and the prophets, This man does not deserve to die, for he has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. Then certain of the elders of the land rose up and spoke to all the assembly of the people, saying, Micah of Moresheth prophesied in the days of Hezekiah king of Judah, and spoke to all the people of Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Zion shall be plowed like a field, Jerusalem shall become heaps of ruins, and the mountain of the temple like the bare hills of the forest. Did Hezekiah king of Judah and all Judah ever put him to death? Did he not fear the Lord and seek the Lord's favor? And the Lord relented concerning the doom which he had pronounced against them. But we are doing great evil against ourselves. 
Now there was also a man who prophesied in the name of the Lord Urijah, the son of Shemaiah of Kirjath Jerim, who prophesied against this city and against this land according to all the words of Jeremiah. And when Jehoiakim the king, with all his mighty men and all the princes, heard his words, the king sought to put him to death. But when Urijah heard it, he was afraid and fled and went to Egypt. Then Jehoiakim the king sent men to Egypt, Elnathan the son of Akbor, and other men who went with him to Egypt. And they brought Urijah from Egypt, and brought him to Jehoiakim the king, who killed him with the sword, and cast his dead body into the graves of the common people. Nevertheless the hand of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, was with Jeremiah, so that they should not give him into the hand of the people to put him to death. The Gospel of Mark, Chapter 15 Immediately in the morning the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, and they bound Jesus, led him away, and delivered him to Pilate. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered and said to him, It is as you say. And the chief priests accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. Then Pilate asked him again, saying, Do you answer nothing? See how many things they testify against you. But Jesus still answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Now at the feast he was accustomed to releasing one prisoner to them, whomever they requested. And there was one named Barabbas, who was chained with his fellow rebels. They had committed murder in the rebellion. Then the multitude, crying aloud, began to ask him to do just as he had always done for them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had handed him over because of envy. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd so that he should rather release Barabbas to them. Pilate answered and said to them again, What then do you want me to do with him whom you call the king of the Jews? So they cried out again, Crucify him! Then Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wanting to gratify the crowd, released Barabbas to them. And he delivered Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium. And they called together the whole garrison, and they clothed him with purple. And they twisted a crown of thorns, put it on his head, and began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! Then they struck him on the head with a reed and spat on him. And bowing the knee, they worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took the purple off him, put his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him. Then they compelled a certain man, Simon, a Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus, as he was coming out of the country and passing by to bear his cross. And they brought him to the place Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. Then they gave him wine mingled with myrrh to drink, but he did not take it. And when they crucified him, they divided his garments, casting lots for them to determine what every man should take. Now it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the inscription of his accusation was written above, The King of the Jews. With him they also crucified two robbers, one on his right, the other on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled which says, And he was numbered with the transgressors. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also, mocking among themselves with the scribes, said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him reviled him. Now when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. 
And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood by when they heard that said, Look, he is calling for Elijah. Then someone ran and filled a sponge full of sour wine, put it on a reed, and offered it to him to drink, saying, Let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. Then the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. So when the centurion, who stood opposite him, saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the Less, and of Joses, and Salome, who also followed him and ministered to him when he was in Galilee, and many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. Now when evening had come, because it was the preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent council member, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, coming and taking courage, went into Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate marveled that he was already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him if he had been dead for some time. So when he found out from the centurion, he granted the body to Joseph. Then he bought fine linen, took him down and wrapped him in the linen, and he laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock, and rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. And Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joses observed where he was laid.